I have slightly older kids and then a toddler, he seemed so adept with the iPad. He, he needed hardly any teaching at all. Tree. Tree? You're looking for a tree? Yeah. Well, these are all words that are about stuff that people do, so there's no, no tree there. No, the one where the bee comes out. Oh, which one is that? G-R-O-W. Grow. Grow. Oh, ah, look, it came out. We tend to think of iPads as something new and kind of insidious, even though kids have been zoning out in front of the TV since the days of Sally Draper in the 1960s, but there's something about iPads that just seems different. Well, there's a big rift because, in fact, the researchers are starting to think that there might be something in these devices for young children, and they operate in a quite different way than television, but the American Academy of Pediatrics chose to reinforce its 1999 recommendation, which was uh, strongly against putting forms of electronic media in front of small children. As you know, I have a toddler at home myself and I'm obviously pregnant again. So I was especially interested in the part of the article where you write about these shows for very young children like Blue's Clues or Dora the Explorer. And you describe these shows almost as if they're precursors to the iPad in a way. Oh, hi, I'm so glad you're here. Come on in. Well, over the years, there's evolved this great collaboration between the researchers and the TV makers, and they've gotten together, and they've basically thought about what makes an excellent show. Wow, look at this forest environment. It's full of... What is it full of? Great innovation was with Blue's Clues was something called the pause. It happens on Dora, too. And the point is that the children then sort of perk up and feel connected and answer the question. What was your favorite part of the trip? I like that too. I thought it was interesting that when you went and visited that, that gathering of, iP of app developers that even they put limits on their kids and one of them who's a, who was a former Montessori teacher said that she felt that it was too addictive and too stimulating to have her kid in front of it all the time. There's something that gets a little crazy when you try to take it away from them and it seems a little more like crack than maybe some other toys might be. Yeah, but I think, I think we have to really think hard about when children are concentrating intensely and when they're addicted. I mean, we have these things in our head, brain starts to mush or the child is addicted you know, that's a very rare phenomenon. A child who's genuinely addicted is a rare phenomenon. Do you feel like something's being lost from the world of tactile play because of that? Like sure, but something's being gained from the world of technology. It's like, yes, I mean, all the different toys have their great advantages, but I think this nostalgia we hold on to that there's only one way to have a pure childhood is crazy and counterproductive. It's fine, they're learning some sort of thing from that, and they're learning a different sort of thing from their blocks. You know, it's also the question, I don't know if you address this particularly in the article, but we all, like, as adults, I think a lot of us are trying to curb our technology. Yes. And we're not, we don't want to sit around living with our family, be checking our iPhone constantly. So how does all of this play into the idea of, of raising your kids to not always be using their gadgets as they get older and older and get into this w world that we're in? I think that's a big part of what's influencing our parenting decisions is our own ambivalence of how, about how we ourselves behave around technology. But I think then the just kind of reflexive, it's dirty, get it away, is just transferring that neuroticism and anxiety onto our children thoughtlessly without at all engaging with this idea that we do live in a screen age and so we have to sort of think about how we want to integrate this technology into our lives and whether we want to make it a natural organic part of our lives or just some like dirty place that we go sometimes.